Hey, Dan here, and I'm answering an Ask Dan question from Grelis from New Zealand. Hey Dan, apparently INFPs are optimistic about dreams and love and believe in happy endings, but none of these are true for me. For some reason, as a 16 year old, I'm too afraid to allow myself to dream about being happy in the future, and I don't really believe in love for myself, even though I've never been heartbroken before. Does that make me less of an INFP? This is an awesome question, and I thought about answering it in many different ways. I thought about getting into the different functions and types and development and how we operate under stress, and I decided to get rid of all that for a personal story. If you met me when I was 16, you would assume that I am the furthest thing from an ENFP. ENFPs, we are known as being optimistic, we believe in people, we want others to succeed, we want to stand up for justice, and I was a complete asshole for a decent chunk of my childhood. Now, there's reasons for that. If we really want, it's because I felt like shit about myself. It's because I didn't feel good about myself. It's because of probably a whole bunch of other things going on. But ultimately, a lot of us, when we are teenagers, whether it's because of bullying, because of parents, because of just the whole class environment and school that is not necessarily set up for the slightly more rebellious ones of us, you know, we're not necessarily in a happy place. Um, so I'd be willing to say that a lot of people, whether it is INFPs or ENFPs, we are not really our true selves for many years. Now that does not apply to everyone. I talk to lots of clients of mine who have their children typed and know them really well and it totally fits and it totally adds up. But in many cases, especially when it comes to something like what you're talking about, being more, I guess, negative, not believing in love, not being able to dream big, the first thing that came to mind for me reading this is thinking back to myself. And we're not in the best of circumstances we have trouble dreaming big. I mean, not only as a teenager, I've experienced this in my 20s after going through a big failure and being extremely stressed and being really uh, not in a great place in life. And the ability for me to dream big and think about, even the question I used to, when I was younger, I used to love the question, like what if you won a million dollars or what if you could do anything, right? And you sit and think about it and dream. There were periods where I couldn't do that. It just, my mind had closed off to it because my circumstances were so negative that it, I wasn't able to be myself. Does that make me less of an ENFP? Does it make you less of an INFP? Absolutely not. We are products of our circumstances at times and we adjust and part of, you know, this is, I'm gonna go on a bit of a rant here. This is one of my big issues with type psychology. And yes, I talk about ENFPs and INFPs and, and psychology of personality a lot. And I think it can be a really good tool for helping us gain self-awareness and then design our lives. But it can also be really destructive because we are so much more nuanced than a type. And a lot of the descriptors online, a lot of what you read are really, really dumbed down they're really generalized. They, they don't account for a lot of different circumstance and a lot of the nuance that really is required to understand someone. And so are you any less of an INFP? You are not. Although with that said, being an INFP is not an award, right? Where you want to be the most INFP or the least INFP. It is a way to understand a bit more about you and about how you function and how maybe you interact with the world and other people and to use that to become the best version of yourself and to maybe connect with others more by understanding that they think a bit differently than you do and that they function differently than you do. And that is where I see the value in personality psychology. It's not as a way to define yourself and really box yourself in. If you start doing that, if you join some Facebook groups about your type where there's a billion memes posted about all the extremes and everything else, that is not a good track to go down. So to go back to your original question about um, where you're at is, 
I would just let you know that things are going to change for you. That as you get older, as your circumstances change, you will grow into your type more and you will find that optimism, that ability to dream as well. Um, you know, if, if you were 25, I would say to really look at the things in your life that might be um, limiting you or stressing you out and maybe causing a bit more of what could be pessimism. Uh, you didn't directly say that you're pessimistic. You just said that you're not necessarily believing in happy endings or big dreams or things like this. Um, the reason I hesitate is if I remember correctly, being 16 can sometimes really suck and, uh, and you don't necessarily always have control. Um, but one thing I, I would say you can definitely do at any age, at any time, is look for more positive sources of inspiration. Look for people who do believe in happy endings and in love. Maybe it's movies as well or books you can read and connect with that may help open you up to some of those more optimistic, positive beliefs. And maybe look for some of the sources of more pessimistic or negative beliefs in your life. If there's certain things you're following, if you're following the news all the time now, I mean, that's setting you up. I know there's a lot of um, troubling things happening in the world. So it's easy to turn on the news and think, wow, everything's going to hell. The world is so bad. Um, and, you know, having those thoughts makes it hard sometimes to have the other thoughts of, true love and believe in your dreams and believe in possibilities. So right now I'm filming this video from Belgrade in Serbia and I usually live in Prague in the Czech Republic and one of the things that really helps me do is remind myself that people and the world as a whole, we've been through some struggles in the past and to try to put things into perspective. And it's not to say that there's not a lot of bad going on now, but that you know, where I am now currently was being bombed 20 years ago. The Czech Republic Prague was occupied by the Soviet regime for 50 years and before that the Nazis and before that the Germans who weren't Nazis. So there's a lot that has happened and looking at that as a way to just put things in perspective that I like to do and try to focus on the good and not to say ignore the bad and ignore the things we need to do to be responsible for creating a better future, but to use this as a tool for my own mindset because if we're in a state of negativity and despair, it can be really hard to focus on moving forward and taking action and doing things like believing in your dreams and creating the kind of career you really want and would be happy in where I'm sure you'd be able to give a lot more back to the world. If you are new to the channel, my name is Dan. This is Dreams Around the World and my mission here is to help you become the best version of yourself all while creating the most awesome life possible for you and those you love. So do consider hitting the subscribe button, hit the bell so you're notified of new videos and I will catch you in the next video soon. Bye for now.